Hello and welcome to the Narbo Experience. I'm Kath. I'm Anna Marie, and today we are taking you through the process that we went through to build a hearth on our narrowboat. First of all, we did a little bit of research into the safety requirements and ended up on the Solid Fleck website, where there's a very helpful PDF that gives you information about what materials to buy to build a hearth for a solid fuel stove. We decided to install our diesel heater next to a half bog head wall in an empty corner of the narrowboat. This meant we had two combustible walls to protect. We bought three sheets of calcium silicate board to allow us to do this, one each for the walls, some porcelain tiles and also some cement board. Once we had the materials, we needed to work out the measurements for the hearth. I want to make sure that my hearth is not massive and doesn't take up lots of room because the stove that we've chosen to install doesn't have a big footprint. To make sure that the measurements are all clear and to enable me to visualise clearly what I'm doing, I've decided to build a template with the assistance of Munchie, who's gone to sleep. This can't be right. Once we finished the template, we were able to work out the rough dimensions that we wanted to build our fire surround and hearth. We paid close attention to the guidelines in the installation manual, which gives the minimum distances that you need to be away from the combustible and the non-combustible material. When planning out the installation, we wanted to minimise the number of cuts that we made to the calcium silicate board and also minimise the number of cuts that we had to make on the porcelain tiles. Due to the space that we're working with, we were able to leave one board without making any cuts and make minimal cuts on one of the other boards just to knock out the corners. So I've cut the board and got it so that it slots under the uh, gunnel protruding bit so that we don't have to do a long cut because I want to retain the straight edges the best I can. This is roughly what it's going to look like. We've got to put a bit of baton behind the board that's on the bulkhead to the kitchen just to give a little air gap and then the other one we're not gonna I'm gonna put some board behind there to brace it but we're just leaving the whole gap between the gun also that it's straight and I'm not going to cut this board but then we're going to cut another board to go on the floor and a tile and some cement board we started the installation by attaching scrap wood to the bulkheads This was to give a air gap between the wood and the calcium silicate board as per the guidelines in the document we've already referenced. As the hull sides have a tumble home below the gunnel, we decided to square up the calcium silicate board with the other bulkhead wall. This was to minimise the number of cuts that we have to make to the tiles so that we have a square corner as opposed to following the angle of the wall. The air gap then is larger than the required 10 millimetres and we were able to prop up the board with different scraps of wood. Thank you. 
we fitted the piece of calcium silicate board that went on the floor last this needed to be cut to size and then we attached it with glue and screws Moment of truth to see whether or not the floor of the hearth fits in. whether or not we want to put a diagonal cut at the bottom of the half we want to see if we can walk around it and what that's actually going to be like because at the moment it's a rectangle but we're going to just decide whether or not we need that then to be a hexagon we have a dot in the middle of the hearth, which is 20 centimeters in from the combustible materials. Because it is a single lined flue, it needs to be six inches away from combustible materials, uh, which is different than a multi-fuel stove. So um, check with your supplier to see how far apart that has to be. In our case, we're thinking of having the stove diagonally placed. So we're just kind of looking at the diagonal now to see what we prefer. It's now day two of the half build. Yesterday we attached all the fireproofing and today we've got three main jobs to do. The first is to cut and attach the cement board which will go on the floor of the half and the other two jobs involve cutting and attaching tiles. So we've already laid the wall tiles out in the pattern that we want. We're really happy with the pattern so stay tuned to the end to have a look at our tiles. The guidelines that we read online say that to cut cement board, use a carbide tipped blade to score it and then snap. We didn't have one of those, so we used the Stanley knife. If you use a Stanley knife, it looks like this. Two, three, three. Okay, nope, no, that one. One, two, three, there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. No. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, no. Nah. Ready? One, two, three. See? Not school. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well done, you. Did you see it lifted me up though? Yeah, no. Thank goodness. For the final cut, we used a handsaw. <laughs> <laughs> with that we're gonna glue that on and also put some really long screws through that go through the cement board the calcium silicate board the laminate and the subfloor so they're proper long screws To go on top of the cement board we bought a single grey porcelain tile. Now we realised we did just buy a tile that looked exactly like the concrete board. It was 600 by 600 and we did have to cut it down. We used a diamond tip tile cutter, um, an electric one, and we were able to shave off some of the tile to make it fit. So here it is, our actual tile design for the fireplace. We surprisingly spent a whole hour trying to get this look 
and trying to make sure that it was exactly the design we wanted because we want it to look like a pattern but, but not, not a pattern but not a pattern and also not to look too crazy but crazy enough tiling was the bit i was looking forward to and it was the most fun we cut the porcelain tiles with the electric tile cutter which worked really well because of the layout of the hearth we had only to do a small number of cuts we chose to use porcelain tiles over ceramic tiles because they're good at absorbing heat and not transferring it to surrounding areas so we do get a little bit of extra protection from the tiles about to stick on the last tile so we have to let the adhesive dry for three hours then we can grout it we've got some really lovely gray grout we have a Chinese restaurant down the road so we're gonna have dinner and then we're going to decide whether or not we're going to grout it tonight because it's already quite late. We're going to grout it tomorrow. I've already decided. We're grouting tomorrow. We'll tidy up now because grouting yeah. is a different thing and we've got a lot of things to tidy up. Yeah. You may notice my awesome matchstick spacers. <laughs> this is a tip I learned from, learned from my dad and I might slightly be regretting not buying proper plastic spaces Ooh. just because all of these matches are slightly different sizes, sizes. but they cost me nothing <laughs> good morning today we have two jobs left to do the first job is to finish grouting Kath has 30 minutes before the grout goes off and the other job we have to do is still to put a trim around the fireplace but today we can actually finish off the fireplace let the grouting set before the installation of the diesel heater half done sorry half done um I think a third done well actually it might be half because this middle bit's getting done as well the problem with the grey grout is you can't actually tell the difference. <laughs> so we've got our top tips if you are going to tile or install a hearth. One of the things that I want to mention is that you are going to need a torch if you are inside a narrowboat and you're doing any kind of precision work. This is an LED rechargeable torch light. The second thing I wanted to mention is when you're tiling you're going to end up with grout everywhere. So these magic sponges, you can get them from Poundland, don't get the super expensive ones. Um, these are fantastic, you don't have to wet them. I've gone over the grout with the wet clean sponge and then I just really carefully take it right up to the grout edge and um, get rid of some of the film because if the grout dries on the tile you're pretty much stuffed. Of course. Finished! It is all finished. All the grout in the tiles and the bottom. All we have left to do is the trim, um, but I'm really, really happy with it. 
My third tip is try to use some paper towel or a bit of cardboard at the bottom of your tiles, especially when you're doing wall tiles, because I did have a lot of grout fall down on my main tile and that just involved a lot more washing up. So if I had put down paper towels, I didn't actually do it this time, um, it would have been a lot easier to clean up. There is one job left. Yes, we still have to do the trim of the hearth. Kath's already started doing a lot of the cuts of the trim, um, but she's a bit of a perfectionist, so it's taking a bit of a while. I have to get the angles right, and it's taken me a while, and it's a little bit dark, so it's quite hard to work in the dark. Yes, so we still have that to do, but we have a completed hearth. We're incredibly proud of our efforts, and um, have spent many an hour admiring it because <laughs> it literally is in front of us on the sofa if you have enjoyed it please give it a like if you plan to make your own hearth also give this a like if you have some tips of your own because you are great at building hearths please leave them in the comments below and as usual don't forget to subscribe you don't want to miss when we get the fire installed yes that's next obviously thanks for watching thanks bye bye